quiz, everybody. Can you name the last SEC West school that won the national championship whose name's not Alabama? The answer to that is the Auburn Tigers, who was also the last SEC West school to win that division, whose name is not Alabama. Now, for Auburn, last season did not show much of a reflection of an SEC West championship team. We knew that right out of the gates when they lost two of their first three games. And they did, however, pick it up, winning their next six, but then stumbled by losing three of their final four games. The injury bug simply was just too much for Auburn to uh, overcome on both sides of the ball. But entering this season, talking about the offense, Auburn may have found some answers. But before we get into the offense for the 2017 Auburn Tigers, did you know that Auburn's rich football history has seen 12 undefeated seasons, yet only two claimed national championships. That's right, just two. Uh, one of them was 1957, and even in that year, it wasn't unanimous. Auburn won the AP title, while Ohio State won the UPI title. And the most recent national championship came, well, just seven years ago. In 2010, that was the Cam Newton Heisman Trophy year. And prior to 2010, their recent undefeated seasons, um, not that long ago, 1993, when they went unbeaten, um, that year under first year head coach Terry Bowden, but were on probation, so couldn't go to any national championship games. And 2004, undefeated regular season, won the SEC, but finished third in the country behind USC and my Sooners. Auburn that year won the Sugar Bowl, but had to settle for the number two ranking in the country despite going 14-0. So a bit of history right for you. Well, Auburn hopes to make plenty of great history on the field this year, and perhaps their passing game got a big upgrade for two reasons. Number one, Chip Lindsey is now the new offensive coordinator under Gus Malzahn. He's from Arizona State. They know a thing or two about throwing the ball. Now, don't get me wrong. This is still a Gus Malzahn offense, but expect more downfield throwing. Other good news as far as the passing attack for the Tigers, the addition of Jared Stidham. And I know Big 12 fans know who he is. The former Baylor quarterback who played uh, just one year for the Bears, and that was 2015. 12 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Um, he started three games and played in 10 that year for Baylor. But now he is a member of the Auburn Tigers and still has three years of eligibility left. His backup, Sean White, was one of several quarterbacks used last year by Malzahn. But White has had a history of injuries, and that's to put it mildly, at least four notable injuries over the last two years including a bad shoulder a year ago and a broken arm that he suffered in the Sugar Bowl loss to OU. As far as the ground attack goes, this is a big positive. It was, it was last year for the Tigers, thanks to the uh, duo of Cameron Petway, who led all SEC running backs in yards rushing per game with over 120 despite injuries. Speaking of injuries, his teammate Carrion Johnson had the injury bug as well, but when both of them were healthy, made a big impact. Um, getting back to Petway, he missed three games last year, and it really did affect Auburn. And even when he came back against Alabama, it was not the same running back. So the big thing will be the health of those two guys. And, you know, you're talking about some other skilled players for Auburn. Let's go to the wide receivers where their best one has now moved on. Uh, that was Tony Stevens. So who will be the number one target? Well, either Ryan Davis or the speedster. It looks like in uh, Darius Slayton could be that number one guy. So the chemistry that those guys have with Stenham, who looks like the starter entering the fall, Stenham came off a really good spring game. Um, that will be a major factor in Auburn trying to be a two-dimensional attack instead of being merely a one-dimensional attack, which we saw a lot of in 2016. Offensive line, for the most part, looks set. Looks like the best of the bunch, Braden Smith, will move from guard to the right tackle spot. Left tackle is already solidified with um, with uh, Darius James. And the center, he's back in Austin Golson, a uh, senior. The guards, obviously, that's an area where Auburn's going to be green in, including losing all everything Alex Cozen. Last year's Auburn defense was outstanding, to say the least. Matter of fact, they were seventh in the country in points allowed per game, only giving up 17 points a contest, and their rushing defense was third in the SEC. But they've got a couple of players to replace who were picked in this past year's NFL draft. That's the defensive end Carl Lawson and Montavious Adams. Got to be replaced. Good news, though, for Auburn, the defensive end spot, this guy's a rising star, and that is Marlon Davidson, who as a true freshman got the start in 2016. So you have his 
um, skills back. He could be that next Carl Lawson, perhaps, at a defensive end. Now, defensive tackle, you have Dontavious Russell with Jr. And how about the play of Andrew Williams, three sacks a year ago, he's back. So, again, you got to replace Adams, you got to replace Lawson. Hard for me to believe that Auburn will be as good on that defensive front as they were last year, but then again, they're just not going to go in the tank either. They'll still be effective. They're definitely going to be effective at linebackers because they return all three of them, including Trey Williams. Defensive backfield does, however, lose um, Rudy Ford, or some people call him uh, Jonathan Ford. He's now with the Arizona Cardinals. But the rest are back, including last year's leading tackler, that's Trey Matthews, who also had a couple of picks. And you'll also return uh, Carlton Davis at one corner. By the way, another safety is back in uh, Stephen Roberts. Now, special teams-wise, on one hand, place kicking, probably the most secure any team has in college football. That's because of Daniel Carlson. Guy will probably be All-American at season's end. 28 of 32 place kicking a year ago for a sick 88%. Auburn has played 39 games the last three seasons, and Carlson has kicked in all 39 of them, and he's never missed an extra point. 141 out of 141. Reliable from just about any distance that Auburn is in when they contemplate a field goal. Can't tell you how valuable that is down the stretch in the crunch, and Carlson is that security blanket you have as far as special teams. Now, punting, not nearly as secure of a situation. In fact, they're going to go with the new punter, um, Ian Shannon, who was number two on the depth chart last year as a freshman. The schedule for Auburn, as you can imagine, playing in the SEC West, it is demanding. Well, how about adding Clemson to the mix in game number two? Now, these teams played last year at Auburn, and Auburn played Clemson pretty tough, but Clemson won it by six points. you got to play them on the road this time. At least, though, you don't have to face Deshaun Watson. That helps. The SEC opener for Auburn, it's going to be at Missouri from the SEC East. So that's a big break that you get to play Missouri, who's pathetic, and you don't have to face Tennessee or Florida. Now, biggest stretch, I think, for Auburn is going to be that three-game stretch, middle of the season, three road games in a row, including LSU. So don't have to say anything more about that. But if you get past the Tigers of LSU – you think you can handle Arkansas, the bye week, then you go to Texas A&M. Of course, this is a hot seat year for Kevin Sumlin. And two of the last three big-time games, Georgia and their terrific running back in Nick Chubb, and then, of course, the Iron Bowl to close it out against all everything from the SEC. That's Alabama, but at least you get them at Jordan-Hare Stadium. But Alabama's won the last three in that heated rivalry. Vegas total has Auburn picked to win eight regular season games. Do I think that's going to go over or under, or I think it's just about right? I think it's going to go over, but barely. Auburn is going to be a better team than they were last year, but receiving-wise, i got to see what they're going to do. Of course, defensive line, they'll still be good, but losing Adams and losing Lawson, like I said, they're not going to be as good, and that's a big, big thing because of quarterback pressure and rushing disruptment that that line created against the opposition. So, And not to mention that difficult schedule, especially that middle stretch of it, a three-straight road game. So I've got Auburn picked to win nine games. Auburn's good, but to dethrone Alabama, you have to be great. That's my look at Auburn. Catch you later.